Oh, with Umberto. Okay. So. Oh, up. Yeah, I'm going up. Please, can we start? Mm. All right. I think we should have two minutes, one minute. No, I said, no, I said, no, no. Wait, we wait. A little bit faster, please. It's already two o'clock. Good afternoon. Uh, we will continue our activity with uh, hands on activities. Uh, it is uh, now time to have an experimental session on optical tweezers. We have manipulation of uh, micron-sized particles and discussion with students. Uh, it is a nice experiment uh, prepared by uh, Professor Dan Kozok and uh, the tutor, uh, Dr. Muhammad Sulaiman Yuf. Yusuf Zai. Yusuf Zai. I have to repeat for several times. It's like a music. So uh, it is uh, dedicated to everybody. First, you will have the explanation, and then please follow the indication of uh, the professor and the tutor. And take care of the indication. Do not touch the experimental setup. Enjoy your time for experiment, please, Professor. Yes, thank please, you. Doctor. Okay, so um, I will try to be short with explanations because I know that you are interested more in uh, the experimental part. I see that many of you are tired and probably after the conference reception or the work, uh, call, or workshop, uh, or whatever, winter college uh, session. Um, so. We, what we have here, we have uh, an optical tweezers, a modular setup from Tor Labs. And um, it is uh, composed mainly by a um, laser, fiber laser at 975 that is directed towards this objective onto the sample, which is put on a sample holder and um, where we insert microbeads in water and we will trap. Then we have the illumination. We see, we want to see also what we are doing. No? And uh, we have the illumination part through the lead, which through a condenser, which is lower numerical aperture, illuminates the sample and the image is formed on this camera. Then the, the second module, this is an optical trapping and manipulation module with which you can trap, move the particle, and observe. The, other, the second module is um, for force detection. And this is composed by 
I start from the end by a um, position sensing detector, which receives through a lens here, which images the back focal plane of the condenser onto the sensor, so receives the pattern, which is the interference pattern obtained from the scattered light from the bead plus the light not scattered taken from the sample through this condenser. Okay. Then you will see also other components. For instance, this one is a nano piezo, which allows to move in three directions with nanometric precision in order to calibrate. Because to detect position, you need first to calibrate the detector, which means that you need to move the sample with a precise value and see which is a signal on your PSD. And um, well, then there are the controllers, and uh, we will discuss a bit more after. So this is the scheme as I uh, explained to you now. So I can add that you need a beam expander. This is important because you need to fulfill the pupil, the entrance pupil of the objective in order to use all the numerical aperture and to create the gradient and to can trap. If you send a laser beam which is not expanded, it's not enlarged, you do not trap, you just push the particles. Okay, one important feature of this kit is that comes from its uh, modular design and is the fact that you can easily implement other imaging or spectroscopy stuff on it. So for instance, you can insert fluorescence, you can insert Raman spectroscopy because mainly, basically what you have, you have an infinite pass here. No? So as we speak here, here is a detector, here is a camera, sorry, here is a laser. So here we can insert through beam splitters different input for fluorescence, for spectroscopy, Raman, for laser, laser dissection, whatever. So in this sense is modular. This setup was developed at MIT by the group of Professor Lang. And uh, you can find uh, more information about uh, how it works, about uh, different applications in this paper in American Journal of Physics, optical tweezers for undergraduates. And then it was taken, it was produced by, by Tor Labs. Uh, by chance, I know the story because one of my students at that time, 2005, 2006, was at MIT, and he was very impressed because he noticed besides the very precise optical tweezers for measurement setup, 30 setups. And he told me, Dan, here people play with setup. They, each student has uh, the possibility to work. Huh? And knowing our difficulties here. In fact, they were working on this type of setup. So it was like a practice and feedback from students before producing it. Um, so I'm not uh, making publicity of uh, Tor Labs. I'm just saying a bit the story. And uh, as characteristics, so you will find, and we can discuss more, so we will find on this material that I will upload um, the server. And we can discuss more. So the trapping module, as I said, has a laser, has a trapping objective, high numerical aperture oil immersion, but it is not the only option. It can be water, whatever. The important thing is to be high numerical aperture. Has a depth of focus about one micron. The spot size about 0.6. I speak for the wavelengths that we use. The working distance, 230 micrometer. No, which is not big, but it is enough. While the condenser uh, ah, and has a good transmission 
also for infrared. When, if you build your own, when you buy the objective, take care about the transmission curve because usually the objective microscopes are uh, designed for visible light, so to be optimized between uh, 300, 400, uh, 400 and 800. And then the, the performance might fall down quite fast after this. Um, Okay, the stage has, besides the nano, it has also, because the nano positioner allows you good po precision, but this one, because it's low cost, has a limited range, 20 by 20 by 20 microns, but it costs only 5,000 euro or so. Okay? Then to move first the sample, the stage, there are the micrometer, and there are the differential micrometers, which allow you to move with one micrometer precision, mechanically, so in all the directions, and then there is a, a usual micrometer with which you move faster. Then the position sensing uh, and force module, it might be quadrant photo position detector, or in our case today we have a position sensing det detector, and uh, the trap stiffness is in the range as we discussed in the presentation. We use our um, code to process, but you, from MATLAB they have also nice software and uh, given software for, uh, for processing the data. It costs something like 2,000 euro or so. Um, this is the last slide, I think. Uh, I have to uh, tell you a bit some, some of the story. Now this uh, setup is uh, ICTP setup, which was uh, bought with uh, funding from ICTP and SPIE. And uh, it includes, bes besides these two uh, modules, uh, also a beam steering with galvanometric uh, mirrors that we, um, we have, but we didn't bring them here because they are very sensitive and is, in a demo is, is difficult to, to present. Um, the story behind this is, uh, if I am not wrong, like this. So in 2003, we began um, trapping, uh, op so create building our optical tweezers, and we were working also with ICTP STEP PhD program. Um, soon we had many requests to visit and work with the only setup that we had there, and it was very difficult to run and to uh, have visitors and uh, so to, to make your work. So we were beginning to think about one possibility to have a setup dedicated for practice with students coming through ICTP. Um, initially, we sought with Joe to build a simple setup transportable for demo. Unfortunately, we hadn't money. I built one, and uh, that workshop in Ghana uh, actually was that set up in a box. My friend Francesco Di Fatto was uh, bringing and installing uh, there, my friend and also my ex-student. Uh, then it was produced at Tor Labs. Uh, money could, funding could come up and uh, we succeeded to, to have the optical tweezers from Tor Labs. Then we did some demos around, so we, we call it Optical Twizzler Skid because we bring it with the car there and there and there. And we can make demos, but what it is important also is to transmit information, and that it cannot be transmitted in and trained in two hours or so, just showing. So we had also uh, PhD students, master visitors, working on it, and mainly this was within ICTP programs. So I would mention Fatou Ndoye, who recently defended the 
PhD thesis uh, in Senegal. I mention uh, with pleasure Suleiman, who will guide you for the experiment, who did the PhD with the University of Trieste nanotechnology program. And the last year, so the, after PhD, he had one year uh, ICTP drill. And uh, he will leave to United States from April. Then uh, for short visits, uh, relatively short visits, there were um, uh, Jose Suarez Vargas, Humberto Cabrera, and Ali Reza Moradi. Um, I hope that I didn't forget no one. And of course, uh, I had uh, always collabor the collaboration of uh, Joe Niemela. Um, we didn't speak about nanoparticles. We will try to make metallic nanoparticles to we will try to trap them here. We, I remember that with Alire Zamoradi, we. Ah, does not work. OK, I tell you the story. It's a pity because why it's not working? Can you try to, to make it work? So uh, we try to, to trap nanoparticles. And just to trap them uh, against the wall, as Tatiana Lieva showed to you, no? that uh, you need the third dimension because otherwise you just, uh, just run the, the video. Uh, otherwise, you push the nanoparticles. And what we observed, we observed that even if we worked with infrared light and the particles were oxide, iron oxide, at the moment, and the absorption is low no, by these nanoparticles, uh, we observe that at the moment, since many particles are aggregated together, the cross-section increased, and we got the thermal effect. But the thermal effect, not in, in the sense of the thermal lens, but we got the uh, bubble, because the temperature increased very fast there. Can you run, please? Running? Yes. Ah, OK. So you see, actually, not single nanoparticles, because the resolution of the microscope is not such. The nanoparticles are, I think, here 30 microns, uh, 30 nanometers. Somewhere in the center, you, you see that more or less in the center of the screen, you will see accumulating nanoparticles. And some of them, we can stop them against the cover slip. The configuration is like this. And uh, at the moment, there are more nanoparticles. Uh, it's a bit long, this movie, no? <laughs> a bit boring. <laughs> but uh, keep your eyes on there, because at the moment, it will come the, the nice part. So. Um, this is just to show what you can do with nanoparticles with 2D trapping. And um, in a relatively simple configuration. And I take the advantage also here to tell about a simple experiment using optical tweezers as a tractor. So for instance, at the moment, we had to study two types of liposomes functionalized with molecules which get together, but they bind only if the concentration of calcium, I think it was, it is over a limit. And with optical tweezers, we could do this experiment very simple. We use optical tweezers as an attractor. We put together the liposomes of both type, no? and then we switch off the laser. Here's the molecules, are you see now the bubble.
So, and this behaves, since it is air inside, this behaves like a convex, uh, like a divergent lens, and it attracts also other particles. No, no, it's okay. We lose that. And what you see, not very well here, are other particles coming, being attracted to, to a go further. Skip. Yeah, and then soon you have another and so on. So this would be nice to, to be described. OK, I finished here. I uh, pass the mic to Suleiman and I let you follow this. Okay, so these are just the beads, three microns, silica beads. So I just to check that they are focused or not. So we will go to our. So we are using this optical tweezer setup for force measurements. Force measurements, they are the same like when you indent a cell, a cancer cell or a normal cell with a uh, AFM. So we wanted to do the same kind of uh, stuff with optical tweezers. So. Normally, we call it optical tweezer because it's a mechanical tweezer, so we replace it just with a focused laser and a bead trapped. And we call it optical tweezer, and the, because it applies piconewton forces. So it's like a ball or, a, or an object connected in all direction with springs. So we can utilize this uh, property, and if we displace this bead from the normal position, there is uh, an attraction because of the gradient forces, and we can use this as to calculate forces, which is proportional to the displacement from the center. So this is this, uh, exactly this setup, but here we play with uh, the final, uh, Term, which is, this is the interference pattern of the bead on the quadrant photodiode or on a position detector. And we play with this interference pattern to uh, calibrate the movement of the bead. And from that movement, we then calculate the uh, forces. So the simple thing is, if you have a quadrant photodiode or a position detector, you have uh, three uh, outputs, delta x or x, y, and some signal, which we use for uh, axial indentation. So you just track the position when you calibrate it or not. There are two methods to calibrate, because if you don't calibrate it, it's just an a tie. So you can just play, or a video game. If you calibrate it, you can apply it on cells and in bio and wherever you want. So the um, first 
method, there are many or basically three, but we use two. Equipartition theorem, because when a bead is strapped, it's moving with a Brownian motion. So we, and it has like three degree of freedoms. And each degree has a, a KBT or two. So this is the freedom, the thermal freedom of the bead. So we utilize this property, KBT or divided by the variance or the uh, Brownian motion. So we can calibrate this. We can take out the information about the stiffness. Then next one is uh, power spectrum density in which we just trace the bead just like we will be doing this. And then you plot the density function of this uh, variations. And then you fit with the Lorenzian, which is this one in red. And then you have equations. So this is the uh, plateau, and this is the corner frequency. These are important. And we will try to uh, extract this information here. So there are so many uh, vibrations. And then you can use these equations to find the stiffness and sensitivity. So the sensitivity is important because sensitivity defines the movement of a bead and how you detect it, how much voltage it generates. So this is uh, the simple stuff just for calibration. We will try it just to, we will play with this. The optical tweezer indentation, as I mentioned in AFM, there you have a cantilever to indent the cells. But here you have a tray bead, and then you can uh, uh, indent it also just by looking into the change in interference of the bead axially. But if you look at the forces, it Don mentioned earlier, that up to 50, uh, uh, like uh, piconewton, you come with a cantilever, but after that, the vibrations in a fluid, they are like you cannot measure so precisely. So then we can come to the optical tweezer setup, and with this, we can uh, measure from 10 to below 0 0.001 piconewton. So this is quite uh, good, and we use this just to establish a setup to it's like to acknowledge the AFM or in the lower force regime. So we studied elastic modulus of the cells, our breast cancer cells. How we did it, we move the cell down. So we, and meanwhile we record, we move the stage up and the bead is straight. So it indents the cell, also it displaces, depending on the softness of the cell. And we record uh, a plot like this. So this is the bead trace, which we record with QPD. And this is the signal. And since the setup is calibrated, so we can identify that, OK, how much when the bead moves a bit inside and dents the cell, so we call this indentation. And from these uh, simple calculation, we can extract that how much is the indentation and how much is the bead displacement because the interference pattern on the QPD changes. And how much is the stage displacement, which is SD, we know this because we give a particular uh, signal to the uh, system. And then just using these, you can find out force, which is the bead displacement, because this is important. And then the stiffness is definitely its KBT or variance of the position. And then using Hertz model, so we, because we have everything over here, we have indentation, we have the radius of the bead. So we just uh, normalize this equation, and we plot F against indentation. This is, we linearize and we plot, and from this slope, we define the elastic modulus. So this is the, in red, this is the stage motion. This is the bead motion, which we record with the QPD. And the, the black one is indentation, in, at which depth 
the, B, the, the cell is indented, and then uh, we plot it, and from this uh, uh, linearized region, we uh, identify the elastic modulus for each cells, each cell. So we repeat this for many cells, then we take uh, just we apply statistic, and then we can correct, uh, categorize that which cell is softer and which is um, uh, more stiffer or stiffer, and which cell, because we know that the soft, the cancer cells, when they are isolated, they are softer, but when they are in contact, so we did such a kind of studies. So now I will finish here, and we will start just uh, playing with the setup. So, a uh, few things. So this is just the uh, CCD. So I will shine a laser from here, which will come like this with a dichroic end. Here is, so if I say, because I make it like white, so it's the, the space between, because there are two core slips, so the space is bet, uh, between the two core slips is like 50 micrometer or so. So I will just, insert a, uh, a few ml, a microliters, and I did it so you can see the beads. And then we will focus the bead, you will, uh, the, the laser you will see somewhere here, and then you will see that the, the beads are coming toward the trap. So it's like a balance of gradient and um, uh, scattering like, like that forces. So let's try because we have beads and now we will turn on the laser. I will keep the power very, very low so you will see the beads not so fixed because it's uh, IR and I can't see. If I want to see to align it, then I use some cards to see that, okay, it's, the laser is here. And I have to wear the goggles, but for now it's covered so it's safe. So from here, I am giving a uh, 50 uh, milliwatt of power. So there is somewhere to see. So I have to move the stage up and down. If you see like a blink, then tell me that where it is, because here the monitor is not so well resolved. You see something? No, because it's, so here, the tray is somewhere here. So I will, because there is a spot. If I increase the power, So this is the focus, laser focus, yeah? Sorry? No, no, because I turn on the, the, the light. Yeah, because to have a dark background to see the laser reflection, yes. So here is now the, this, this is the focus now you can see. So I will turn on the light again to shine like this. I'll put a pointer over here. So let's try that our laser can trap or not. So you can see. So this was the So now even if I close it, uh, okay, if I move a bit so, if I re reduce the power, so I, uh, now, if I do it like this,
So if my setup is calibrated, I can use this bead to indent a cell or to attach a DNA theater to pull it or to attach it with the membrane of the cell and then pull the theters so I can do whatever I want in a biological medium, in a physiological medium. And now if, if we find a stuck bead, so this is now the bead and these are like the plots. Now I am collecting the data from this uh, position sensor detector, so let me check again. If I run, I am using this uh, dog, and then so for five seconds, I am using. So this is the trace. These are the traces of this bead, the Brownian motion. When it moves like this, the interference pattern on this QPD, it's it's changing, and I am recording this. Even so, I saved it somewhere. This one. So these are just the thermal vibrations. I convert them. I took the uh, density, uh, densities of these, and this the plot is like this. It should be uh, like Lorenzian, but it's not. But normally it comes like this, and here the plateau starts. It's not because we are using low power. Then the vibration, it's, it's, it should be uh, isolated from any uh, vibrations. But again, if it is like this, we can click, uh, we can select the, so we plot our Lorenzian fit according to our uh, data. And if we say, okay, this Lorenzian, it shouldn't be, because it should come like this, and it should, in a bound state, it should be like this, straight. But it's not because, this is just a demonstration. If we also, uh, Suleiman, sorry. Also because there, there are the low frequencies, no? So there we have a bit of everything, no? Because the power spectrum shows you the density from low to high frequencies. And you do not see a plateau, no? Because the contribution of the low frequencies are, uh, is important, so. Yeah. So, if you say, okay, this is yes, this is the correct uh, behavior of the bead inside the uh, trip, then you, yes, you say yes, and then you can uh, proceed uh, further. If you say yes, then for the X and then for the Y, it's not good, but we say yes. And then for the Z, so in three direction, it gives you the power spectrum, yes. So it shows you, like, the, it calculates the sensitivities, like 0.5, it's millivolt per nanometer. It means if a bead in a trap move one nanometer, so it will generate a voltage of 0.5 millivolt. 
So these are the sensitivities and these are uh, the stiffnesses which you say that uh, this is 0.3 piconewton per nanometer, though these values are not correct, but it, it, it should be like this, that how much is the sensitivity and how much is your uh, trap stiffness. So we, we calibrate it like this and then we have if we know that this, is, this has a particular stiffness, then we just indent the cell or interact this bead, just uh, measure the displacement of that bead, and we have a tool to calculate the forces. Uh, what else? Okay, so if I... Now we can trap even more. If I increase the power to like 100 milliwatt, so now we have two beads. Yes, let's switch off the laser. And the beads, even if I move the stage, so I don't have, so because the laser is off, if I turn on the laser, you can see they are attracted and they are, so it's like this. So now if I move, I will have these two beads. So because we are looking from the top, one bead is trapped, the other bead comes like this. And if we are trapping, so they will be on the same. If we uh, trap another one, maybe it will not or so the bead which is free. not willing to come, so I lose this one. Okay, so here the window is like, because the two beads, so if I'm traveling, the, the bead which is down, so it's, it's, uh, it is uh, obstructed by some dust and then I lose it. So, so the optical tweezer which we apply forces is the same. If you move, against like this, and you displace the bead, and then you can apply piconewton forces, less than 10 piconewton. If I turn on another plot, it's like, okay, so, Now we are going to move the stage. So, yes? Okay. Okay. Okay, let me have
what I am doing now because I am moving the stage up and down. So it's like a kind of indentation. You can see if I record it. So now, so it's the same even if you move up and down or you move it laterally, you will have with any particular, and with this you can identify the viscosity of your fluid. Just you move, and when you lose the bead, it's the escape velocity, and we are now trying also to find the different fluids with different viscosities. So if I increase the amplitude, I increase the frequency, so I will have uh, different uh, escape velocities depending on the uh, viscosity of the fluid. So if I say, okay, uh, so now I'm using like six to seven micron so if there is some obstacle over here, so it will just pinch or just strike that particular region. So all this is like, now we are playing with the kind of video game, so. Yeah, so you can join, you can shape or so it's, like the house is open now, so you can ask question and. <laughs> Suleiman, sorry if I can. Uh, so let us organize like this. Um, if you have questions now, and then if you are curious about the components and so, but when we go there, we switch off the laser to avoid any, so to be, to respect the rules for laser safety. We put, we have six goggles, but it is uh, impossible that we organize uh, everything. So if you have questions now or later, please. Thank you. As I've noticed in the slides, uh, for measuring the elasticity of the cell, <coughs> he used the Hertz model. So I'm, I don't know if I'm remembering right, but the Hertz model is assuming both mediums, both surfaces, definitely, to be elastic. But the cell surface can be classified as viscoelastic. I should thank you for, for the question. You are perfectly right. The point is this. So uh, the cell is mostly viscous, is not elastic, but all, or almost all the results with which you confront your results in AFM are built on a Hertz model. So we know that these measurements, let us say, do not correspond to reality that you should investigate. In fact, you get information about viscosity and you can use it, but if you want to confront with uh, the results with others, you have, some, but you are completely right, I, I agree. In fact, this is um, uh, an advantage, I would say, of uh, optical tweezers and working at low loading rate. Um, but uh, at least in this case, also when we used uh, the um, Hertzian model, I put my hands on my hands on, on, on the head because I said, "My God, what we are going to say here?" 
no, about the stiffness. This is a definition. I mean, but it's a definition about quite a wrong measurement. Any question? Okay, so if there are no any questions, we should organize for, yes, please. It's, uh, I don't know, in small groups, we, we have two rules, that if there are two people, one behind the other, you cannot see, so this makes part of the good sense. And the other rule is about the video cameras that they said that uh, it should uh, see the table. So with a bit of patience and uh, who is curious to see the components and uh, discuss, you can approach to, to the table, please. You are invited. Even if we want to turn on the laser, so it's good to take the goggles for a few minutes, so because we have time, so, yeah. yeah. If, you, if you are not more than six around here, and you yeah. wear the you can, uh, uh, Yes. So, yes. You can take the goggles, so we can turn on then. Uh, when we will turn on, so. No, no, it's, it's off now. Yes, yes, but we will turn it on. Yes, and who else? No, I, I don't need that. I'm, I'm married, so it's. Okay, so normally, if even if I turn on, okay. But I'll use uh, like, uh, okay, 30 is quite, uh, so, so, so I can trap. Mm -hmm. So the laser come like this. If we want to detect the laser, so put just a detector over here or, yes, it's, it's infrared, so you have to detect your goggles. Yeah. Uh, the, the trapping is this one, the laser uh, goes like this, and here is the objective, and the, it, it's somewhere there. Yeah, on, this is the... Uh, so we, tr we, we inject the fluid in this, like, because I made it uh, just... So... No, no, I just use the white tape, the double tape to, yes, to be visible to, yes. No, but the power is quite 30 milliwatts, so it cuts uh, f uh, more than 70%. Uh, so it's like, f yeah. So if, yeah. So if I go on this side, so, so this is one, one laser is here, it's 50. This is not 75, the 51 here and I have one here, uh, 200. So the beam is expanded four times. And then, yes, to, to fill up all this, and it goes here, it trips, and the interference pattern is generated on this QPD by this. This is the uh, uh, lens, and this is now the PSD, that not the quadrant. This is the, just the position sensor. Yeah, but if you are using the axial uh, studies, just like an FM, you need a QPD. And we took the sum signal, normalize it, and then we can use that for using axial studies. Yeah. Yeah. See, the laser is coming here, here, and then so. Then. Um, it's uh, four times. Yeah, because this uh, be is no, with the because it's not damaging the cells. It's transparent to the cells. We are using biological media. Yeah. 
put it here. So, so it's. Uh, Yeah, Nan is waiting to be, <laughs> yes, yeah, you can touch, you can, so. Infrared, because we are using with the biological media, so yes, so we are not heating up, it's transparent, yes. Yes. Particularly uh, 450, we are using 500. Here the exit power is one thing, but when it comes here, it like more than 60 percent. It it uh, yeah, you lose all the. So at the end you you need uh, 20 or uh, 50 milliwatt. But since it's focused, but the infrared. Yeah, transparent, so, so you have very low absorb but now you absorbance have there. Particles. No, now we have, these are the silicon beads. Silicon beads. So yes. yes. And, uh, so if we use a the silicon beads, are they, sorry, are they bigger in diameter than the these? laser uh, beam or not? Which one? Silicon, the, the silicon beads. Yes, yes, these are, these are three micron. And the, uh, and the beam width? No, it's like the one micron. Oh, so it's yeah. Two micron bigger than. Yes. Yeah. One micrometer, three. Raza laser is more than the. No, it depends which particle you can trap. These particles, three nanometer. The one Dan was using it, hmm? yeah, bigger to, yeah. Actually, we didn't bring because we have there the um, Galvo mirrors, two mirrors like this. So you can create different shapes. Glass particles. Yes. It's not the power, it's the numerical aperture which matters, yeah. Even if I can reduce it to 10, we can trade there. So what's the numerical aperture? It's 1.24. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's like, a, yeah. It's a concept of micro channel or channel. Yes, yes. In fact, you just uh, create a. No, no. It's just a tray and you put there. Yes, but. Yeah, but. Yes, 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 yes. yes. But not even with the with the walls, because we have a special uh, because we have heating here, and we have a special holder for this. Because we need to no. Because if we are working with cells, they should be at thirty seven degrees C. Otherwise, if you are measure at room temperature, the stiffness changes, and to work for one hour at least in a safe. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's a... No, 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 here, we heat it, we just uh, fabricate this because we need a heat. The other one, it was not... Yes, but here we, um, here is thermocouple, this one, and this is the heater, this strip. So, yes. So, so we measure quite many times just the temperature over here. Yeah. So, so, so it heats okay. this chamber okay, all. Okay. And you, you have the here. Yes, here. So this is metallic. So, so it heats. Yes, it heats up this region, and not to heat this, we have here a glass. 
not to hit the whole assembly to damage it. Yes, can find so yeah. Where is liquid where you put the, these beads? Where is that liquid where you have put the beads? Where? So, so it's like this. Yeah, the double tape. So I will remove in a very rough way. Now, I'll take one. We are not using this. I'll put it like this because I took, I think, many. You create a space there. Yes. So I did it like this. I'll turn off this. I'll remove this. Okay. Since so so there is a small channel. Oh, you insert. This. Okay, so I will I I have to add uh, because it, it's an oil immersion objective. Yes. So. Now, these are the gold nanoparticles. Let's try this. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. Hmm? I turn it on just to see. Okay. So it's this is the focus. Yes. Though it's it's not. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, like circles. Yeah, it should be, but it's like a, a, a polarized. When you are using a polarized light. So, 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 so they uh, split in uh, like uh, two, four leaves. So. Okay, okay. So, Kasim, you ask this. I just drop no, a yeah. socket with a key. yes. <laughs> what is the size of the particles? 
these are uh, like uh, yeah. Uh, 50 nanometer because I don't know, yeah, so, but these are agglomerates, it's not, uh, okay, because, you see, because these are gold nanoparticles, they are pushed away, yeah, scattering because, so, we will push it up and we will go to follow it, we are here somewhere. The upper surface is here, so we it pushes up, and we will follow it against the upper cover slip. Yeah, it's if you have a three D trapping for the gold nanoparticles, you need to yes. Then we have now gold nanoparticles just to, gold nanoparticles just to follow it. Yes, to follow it to the. On the screen for those who are there, there are gold nanoparticles now. Now, you might see if we switch off the light or. No, they are not particles, they are agglomerates. Aggregates, yes. Yeah. No, these are these, these are these are just this is a X, this is a Y, and this is a to move it up and down. No, no. When when I trap the particle, so the particle moves just by uh, when the medium uh, particle striking the bead. So it's just. Uh, uh, move with a Brownian motion. It it moves, but with a Brownian motion. But the the the, the trap bring it back to the center. So it's like this, and we have a lot like this for this. Yes, for for everyone. If you are in a medium, and because the, the, the you cannot reduce the thermal vibrations. KBT energy shall always be there. No, for everyone in a medium, they, there are there should be one degree of freedom which is KBT. So if it in three D, it should be three times KBT. Yes. Of yeah. yeah, this is because to, to have a visibility because you cannot see with the CCD the single nanoparticle. For that, you need to calibrate your position detector because anything which enters the trap, it creates a kind of fluctuation. So you can then play with that. Even when you, you attach a DNA with a bead, even the same bead, and you, you 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 pull you have another trap or pipe it to pull it you just see that you are stretching something this bead is fluctuating but you don't see the dna yeah so take it okay I love this. Anyone else want to come? Yeah, that's pretty nice now that we have uh, words. Yeah. Nanoparticles, no? They are. No, they are not. But in any case, they are trapped. Uh, 
along the optical axis. Yes, many particles. Actually, we don't have a shaker over here to. Yes, so. Yes. But if, if you have, say, individual particles, then yes. what you will see there? Nothing. Ah. Because it's a, a 50 nanometer, so you can see above 200 or 300, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. but not below because it's a diffraction limit for this one. Yes, yes, yes. yes because with visible light, you can see that. Yes, but for that you need uh, detector, suppose PSD, which creates an interference pattern. It's a position uh, detector or a quadrant photo detector. So if you have a trap and something enters, even with nanometer, because your voltage fluctuations are uh, for an, in a nanometer, millivolt per nanometer. So if something enters, so it means that your uh, interference pattern will fluctuate. Okay. And you can uh, calibrate that one okay. to trip. So you can say that, OK, if you have a uniform uh, kind of, so if you have, suppose, 50 nanometer gold, and you, you trip that, and you, you will have a particular kind of interference pattern and corresponding voltage. If you trip two, it will change. And so, so you can uh, say that, OK, I have one, two. It's the same like thermal lens. You know the, the previous, so you just, if you have one layer of graphene, your thermal lens effect is different. When you add more, the effect changes. So he, here, then you have one, then two, three, because they will be along the, the direction, the axial direction. So the interference pattern changes. So you, if you calibrate that, you can say that I mm, trapped one particle, two particle. Because one particle, like uh, 20 nanometer, and this you can see only with the, uh, TM or SEM. So, so it's not possible with the optics, just CCD to see. If that was possible, then we can see DNA like to, but it's. Uh, Yeah. Stretching. Yeah, it's stretching. So it's the same when I I, I have a, I attach a DNA with two beads, suppose. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I will trap one, or one is supposed to touch. So I will just pull. The same in presentation or with a pipette, a micron pipette. So you have a trap, and then you are pulling the pipette, and that will. Uh, so you can actually. It's like the coils, it's, uh, yes, unwinding. So with every push, you have a signal. So it's like going up. Yes, like, uh, yes. And uh, the same like when you have an um, uh, actomycin motor which moves, so you have a bead which is straight, and the other is on the, uh, on the bead with the, that motor protein, and it goes like this on the octane filament. So in each step, it pulls there the bead. So you can detect that position. Because it moves, you, you give energy, and it moves. So you have these steps. So they then calculate that, OK, for each step in the muscle cell, will I do like this? So for how much energy is needed and how much actually motors they contribute to our muscle contraction and all this stuff. So it's very sophisticated, but uh, it's possible to design. Yes. No, Bustamante group in US, they are doing the same thing. Two beads, and they attach DNA, and then they stretch to see. Yes, with proteins and more, so, so you can play. It depends on that what you want to do and what facilities you have. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, if you can handle, so it's, uh, 
That's why they call uh, single molecule because they want to know from the very basic that what is happening. With a single uh, particle tray, you can study like uh, not as a bulk for a single uh, particle. You can study the surface uh, plasmons, uh, uh, like and one you can shine that one particle. You can yes, yes. So with the surface. No, no, it will be there because, but not so much that you can uh, disturb it, so it should be, so. You can touch this, that it, it has some current or not. You can touch this to play with this because, Maybe not, none is not uh, here, so you can touch. So this whole setup from Tor Labs costs how much? I don't know, 30. I don't know. If you go to the Tor Labs, maybe they have a complete kit and they have a price. Yeah, so I forgot. I'm sorry. This is just to move this from our computer through this. So if I move this like this, so it's, I'm moving it with nanometers precision electronically. If I move this, this is in micrometers and also in, and if I move this, this is one micron, one micron, and this is an mm. Yes. Yes, X, Y, and Z. So when we are mo working with the cells, so when we trap a bead, then we use this to come to the cell in above the cell. Because if we touch this, so that effect, because it's a sudden push, so it lasts for long. So if you move micron by micron, you are not affecting the, you are not giving any vibrations. Yes, X, X, Y, and Z. So, so this is, okay, this is in the, so normally this is the cell, and we have a bead above, and we indent, we the move the stage up and down. So, so. Normally, because when you are working with, so it's closed now, but you can see that there is. So if you put your eye here and you cannot see, but you will damage it. <laughs> yes. You see? It's and then it here and here. So it comes also here because it, it collects and then it project on here. This is IR laser, uh, yes. It's 10, 20 or something like this. So you have only one laser now? Uh, yes, only one. So uh, what Dan said, the counter propagating, so if I take this laser like this, put it here, and another laser like this. So they will be going like this, like this. So in between, they can trap a particle. But it is like now single beam. So what it's, it coming like this, focus is like this. So at the center, because the change in momentum, the net force is towards the center. So that's why we have for a single uh, beam, we have uh, 
it's not like uh, one is like a magnetic uh, levitation when you push against, but it's not like it going like this because the change in momentum, so it trips at this focus. So this is. You're welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. To yes. Um, it? Yes, it's uh, simple. It's. Uh, I mean, just yes, for the calibration curve. That is. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Now it's to heat. When we are working with cells, we need a temperature of 37 degree. Okay, so the cell wouldn't die. Yeah. Not die, but we, at least for one hour, we, have, we are safe because we do not. Uh, yes. 100 X for trapping, 10 X for seeing. Yeah. No, because just, yeah. Just you just need to have a wider kind of uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we can use nanometer from here. We. Yeah, and these are. This is now position detector, PSD. Take the goggles because the laser is on. Uh, and then you go the uh, lens here, mm. which you, in which you align the position. Yes. And how do you align that exactly? You watch this point and align or whatever? Um. Here is also a pointer, you see? Okay. So it so should be at the middle. The lens, yeah. So as long as this is on the center. Yes. Which is not, not, not right now because something's trapped. Yeah. If the trap is off, then it has to be on the center. Yes. So if not, you can. Okay. But this, um, uh, yes, it's. And these are for the laser power. Yeah. And the type of laser is. Um, it's a diode, diode laser. Diode, uh, diode laser. Which wavelength? It's a 10. IR, 10. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, uh, it's free. Free. It's free. Yeah, yeah, free. Yeah. This is? No, no, this is the camera, CCD. Yeah, the laser is there. The fiber, like this, so, so, so it comes like this. There is a dry crack, so it comes like this, this. If you want to... Yeah. This, no, with this. With 100x. With 100x. Yeah. You see that with 100x. Yeah. And the 10 is also collecting. Yeah. Yes. 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 This is the problem. This is the. Yeah. This is. If you want to collect all the light which is scattered by the, or which exit from the this uh, objective, yeah. and to ju yes, aperture. just so ne you need to put it close and to have a high numerical aperture. Yes, this is true. yes, but then if you reduce this, then you cannot put because this sample when you are working with a cell, it's like in a petri dish <laughs> or on a cover slip. So you need to put it. Then you don't have. A, space to put your samples, it, it should be like this, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you align this IR laser which you can't see using a... No, no, this is... This is yeah. You see? Yeah. Go for the multidisciplinary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. High power, so it burns the stuff. So right. when the red is on the burnt part, mm -hmm. so we say these two lasers are so up. Then we the align the red laser. Oh. Co-aligned with the iron. So this is something to try. Yes, okay, Samuel Jack. 
Yes, yes, you can take. Don't take it, but no, it's it. Okay, with the floor is in sale. Martha told me if you want. Yes, I don't know what is next. 